All stretcher bars go together pretty much the same way. They're all mortise and tenon joints. The difference for Evertights, and the reason for concentrating on that today, is that because there's a bolt mechanism in them, you need to make sure that they are put together correctly so the bolts are facing the right direction. This is important when, after you have mounted your work, you can use the T-tool to push the bolts apart. The only tools you need to put them together initially are a hammer, because once you've gotten them together, you do actually need to hammer them to get them all the way in, and the T-tool. Now this is an Allen wrench. If you have an Allen set at home or you have an individual one, check to see whether or not it might work on the sockets. Uh, the one that is sold for the Evertights is an ergonomic one, which I like because it means I can hold it in my wrist much easier than I can a little tiny one. Now you buy them in pairs. So for my project today, which I have my favorite purple in um, 18 mesh canvas, I have an 18 by 10 piece of fabric. So I need two pair of Evertights, a pair of 10 and a pair of 18. What I recommend that you do before you try to put them together is that you dry fit them. So what I'm going to do is lay them out on the table and move my tools out of the way. So I've got bars here for each side. So I have long ones for the 18 inch side. I have shorter ones for the 10 inch side. Now, when I dry fit them on the table, I want to make sure that the bolt is facing inward. And that's because when I put the joints together, I want to make sure that they can get pushed apart. If the bolts are on the outside, then that won't happen and you wouldn't be able to tighten them anyway. So make sure that as you lay them down, that the bolts are facing towards the inside. And I just do this by laying them out on the table just to visually inspect them. The other thing that you want to do is make sure that your mortise and tenon joints are aligned correctly. And if you can see this um, close up, you will notice that in fact, I have them not aligned correctly. So what I need to do is flip my bars so that I have them in the right order. Now I need a smooth to a step down, a step down to a smooth. So this one is incorrect. I need to flip it so that it's got a smooth top. If you don't do that, the mortise and tenon joints, which go together like tenon groove, they won't fit together correctly. So just visually inspect it, make sure that it looks like it's correct before you actually start on the next phase. I have my bars laid out on the table and I know that they are in the right sequence and I know my bolts are facing inward on all of them. So now I'm gonna put them together. What you wanna do is rock them together. And by rocking, I mean taking them and swiveling like this. You can just hammer them in, but when there's only one of each type, it's hard to stabilize this without whacking your hands, which trust me, I've done and isn't really fun. So rocking them together is the best option. So you rock it to get it as close as possible. Now, you'll notice that I turned this, and when I did, my inclination is to grab the next bar. I tend to work um, clockwise. so. If I grab this one, it will be a long one to a long one, which I don't want. So I need to make sure to rotate this so that I grab the correct one. Again, lay it back on the table if you're not exactly sure, just to make sure that you've got the bolts facing inward and the joints are correct. And I have them correct in this case, so I can continue on. I'm gonna rock the next one together. And it does take a little bit of pressure to do this. They are fairly tight, which you want because you don't want them moving apart any more than necessary. And now on this last one, I can rock together the third side, but I cannot rock together the fourth side. Sometimes I even have trouble rocking the third side together. If that happens, just use the hammer. So for the fourth side, I'm gonna slot this in between the next bar and use my little hammer. And as I said, make sure that you hammer the bar and not your hand. You will make indentations in the wood, but it's just wood, so don't worry about whether or not it's really pretty. Now the other thing I want to do before I get to the point of actually mounting my work is I wanna make sure that my bars are completely retracted. The closer they are to the bar that they're actually embedded in, then you get more leverage as you twirl them to get them farther apart. So I'm gonna make a quick pass because I can tell from visually looking at these that they are in fact not all retracted. 
because I had used them on a previous project. So I'm going to go through and retract them all and when we come back then I'll show you what they look like. I've retracted the bolts and I've rehammered the bars to make sure that everything is really tight together. And there's a little picture of that in the picture in picture so that you can actually tell what it looks like close up. Now I need to square this off. I have in putting it together not kept it really quite straight. So I'm going to use the edge of the table which is at 90 degrees to be able to actually get this so that it's perfectly straight. And the way to do this is just push the corners with your hands. If you push these corners, so if I push this corner and this corner together, these will go out. So you can just kind of lay it on here and get it. You don't want it to be, I mean, it doesn't need to be exact, and you can also pull it a little, but you want it to be reasonably close because when you mount your work, you don't want it to look like some strange parallelogram. <laughs> 